on, guys. Fish on. On the umbrella rig. Woo! Up here in the northern section of Narragansett Bay, in between the Seekonk and the Providence River. And I was actually here early this morning, but decided to leave the water after catching my two fish because all the bait and the fish left with the outgoing tide. And then I decided to come back later in the evening and I was actually about to call it for the day and I was trolling an umbrella rig. Woo! And I hooked this big girl right here. Woo! Oh yeah. 50 feet of water out in the middle of the channel here. Woo! On the umbrella rig, rigged with Berkeley flatback shads. Woo hoo hoo! Yeah. Woo! I did not see that coming. Woo! Total surprise. Woo! What a gorgeous fish. Just shy of 33 inches. If you can see that right there. Not a bad fish at all. All right, let's get this girl back in the water and on her way. Woo, there she goes. Woo. That was a complete surprise fish. You know, I was just trolling basically down the center here of the channel, right outside the hurricane barrier. And then I got the Seekonk River over to the back right of me here. And, uh, woo, my hands are shaking. I'm gonna try and do the same thing again and uh, hopefully connect with another bass. And uh, like you heard though, when I was reeling that fish in, earlier this morning I was out here and uh, I caught a fish about the same size on a live line bunker. And uh, then I actually caught a smaller one around 20 inches trying to snag bunker. I caught him on the hook. Just had a bass pop up right behind me. Just had a bass hit the surface right behind me. I gotta get back fishing before these fish go away. All right guys, so the simple setup that I'm using here though before I start fishing again is basically I have four five inch Berkeley flatback shads on three quarter ounce bullet head jig heads, except for one, I have a half ounce jig head, but that really doesn't matter. And uh, then I basically have, you know, have my four armed spreader here, which then I varied the length of 50 pound mono here from the spreader bar to the swim bait. Then I have a barrel swivel and clip connecting to my spreader bar or spreader arms. Then I have about a three foot section of 50 pound mono going to a barrel swivel, which is then tied directly to my 50 pound test braid, which is spooled on my Pen 320 GT2. And then my Mega Master black gold seven foot medium heavy action 15 to 40 pound test line boat rod here. And uh, this is my favorite setup that I us usually use for live bait, trolling, and uh, it's got many 40 pound fish on its belt. But uh, let's get back in the water and uh, try and catch some more fish. That's what we're here to do. I just started to see some bunker actually work their way back up the bay here. They're starting to get sucked back in with the incoming tide. But after catching a fish like that on the umbrella rig, it's hard to switch over and uh, try and snag some bunker and live line. You know, they're hitting the umbrella rig, so I'm gonna stick with this for now. And uh, you know, maybe I'll switch over if this bite dies. I'm trolling around 56, you know, 50 something feet of water. That's right about where the channel is here of the upper Narragansett Bay where the Providence River comes down and then the Seekonk River intersects. Let's troll this umbrella rig through this school of bunker. I think that's why I caught that last bass, or my first bass, because I went right through a school of bunker. I wasn't really trolling any structure. I was kind of just randomly trolling the channel down around 30 feet and wham, got that fish. See this hump right here? When uh, I went right over that hump and I marked a small fish on the bottom and that's right when I got bit on my first fish. Let's see if it works again. I'm gonna dump out a lot of line 
get it down there as deep as possible. And then on the other side of that hump, it slowly declines or drops off. And maybe the fish are sitting right on the edge of that drop off, suspended. All right, fishaholics. Oh, fish on. That was a weird fish. I was actually just about to call it for the day. And I slowed down a little bit and dropped the swim bait or the umbrella rig down. And I got a bite. I got a fish. It's definitely not as big as my first one. Oh, double header. Double header bass. Woo! <laughs> you gotta love that. You gotta love that. I don't even know how these little guys ate this. Ate these five inch Berkeley flatback shads. Look at these little guys. Well, this one's got some kind of disease here, or he's all scuffed up on his scales there. Looks like someone dragged him over a rock. All right, let's get these little guys unhooked and uh, back in the water so they can get 50 pounds. Look at this guy, he's all scuffed up right there. Yeah, he doesn't even have any scales on him right there. Someone definitely, definitely dragged him on a rock or, uh, or maybe he's healing from a, a disease or something. But get, get 50 pounds, buddy. This is the, uh, the real small guy of the litter. Look at that little guy. Nice, healthy little fish. Woo! Those little guys would have been fun on the fly rod. All right, fishaholics. <laughs> I was just about to say my signature thing that I like to say. All right, fishaholics, just when I'm about to do my outro. And uh, tell you the truth, those last two little schoolies were uh, a lucky catch. You know, I fished for like an hour and 20 after catching that first, you know, decent size or 33 incher. And uh, I slowed my kayak down a little bit to uh, look at my camera and actually delete a video because I had like an hour of total footage of me just pedaling around catching nothing. And then I put my camera back on my head, pushed the start button and picked up the rod and was like, all right, fish haul. Oh, fish on. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was great. Uh, that was a lucky catch. But anyways, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, short little video of me catching some striped bass out in the Hobie Outback on umbrella rigs. And uh, I'm hoping to get more videos out there fishing with umbrella rigs and uh, definitely, you know, go more into detail. Well, there was, whoa, look at that swirl there. That was something big. But uh, go in a little more detail of uh, how I like to fish the umbrella rigs because it's more than just pulling it behind the kayak. You know, I let out a certain amount of line basically by eye or basically by looking at the spool on my reel to know how much line I have out. So uh, that's, you know, definitely something interesting that you guys might find uh, helpful when you guys decide to take out umbrella rigs and uh, try and catch some stripers. But uh, anyways, got a good view right here. I hope you guys enjoyed the video again. Don't forget to subscribe. It's uh, about to get too dark for me to film. Don't forget to post the comment in the comment section below if you have any questions at all. Or uh, look in the description below for any more information about tackle, uh, conditions, everything like that. And uh, never forget guys, live to fish, fish to live. I'll see you guys out on the water.